Hello everybody. In this session we're going to be looking at what are the main parts of the CPU and a little bit later in the session we're going to be looking at what's known as von Neumann architecture which is less confusing than it sounds. So we need to understand that the CPU has three main parts and these are the control unit, the arithmetic and logic unit and finally the cache. So we're going to start by talking about the control unit. Now the control unit manages the actual FDE cycle which we've talked about before. So it manages the, the fetching of the instruction itself. Once it's fetched it and brought it back, it will then decode that instruction and it will execute the instruction, which as we know are, are the three main steps that are repeated billions of times in one second in the FDE cycle. So if data needs to be moved around the CPU or maybe moved back into main memory, then the control unit is the part of the CPU which will actually do that. The next part of the CPU is the arithmetic and logic unit. If you remember what that one stands for, then you'll be able to remember what it does really because you've got the word in, in the title itself, the arithmetic part of it. So it does all of the calculations and it performs logic operations such as and, or, and not. Now we'll do a completely separate video on Boolean operators and what logic gates and circuits look like. Uh, but all you need to know for now is that the, the, the arithmetic logic unit does all the calculations and it does perform the logic operations. There has been questions in the past where you had to fill in the blanks. You had to fill in what these letters stood for. So it is worth understanding that the ALU does stand for arithmetic logic unit in case you are asked to fill in the blanks. So once the ALU has performed a calculation, it then has another part in it, which you can see there called the accumulator. And the accumulator will actually store the results of the calculations themselves. And this is one of the registers of the CPU. And finally, we've got cache. Now we have mentioned cache in a previous video. Uh, and the main, the main definition that we understood last time was that it stores frequently used instructions. So when the FDE cycle is being carried out, the CPU will actually check cache to see if the data is there first. Now, if it's not in cache, then it'll go to RAM to fetch it, basically. Now, one thing that we didn't mention last time was that there are different levels of cache. So level one is the fastest. And because it's so fast, it does have the lowest amount of storage as well. And it kind of follows that pattern. So level two is not as fast, but then it can hold more data. And finally, we've got level three. Again, even slower, but it can hold the most data out of the three levels of cache. But your main thing that you need to know from cache is that it stores frequently used instructions. So they're the three main parts of the CPU, but now we're gonna look at what von Neumann architecture. Okay, so I've put together this diagram, which hopefully makes it nice and simple to understand. So in terms of what von Neumann architecture actually is, it's a system where the CPU runs programs that are stored in memory. So as we know, the FTE cycle gets carried out billions of times in one second. And that's where the CPU will fetch instructions that are in memory. Now, the other parts that you can see in this diagram are the registers, which will actually help this process take place. So the program counter keeps track of what instruction that it's up to and will just increase every FTE cycle that's carried out. And it will pass that number to the memory address register. So let's say it was at instruction number one. It will pass that number one to the memory address register. Now the CPU at that point knows that it needs to look in memory address register one, which is in RAM or main memory. So at that point, it will do the fetch part of this cycle where it travels down to RAM and it will fetch whatever's in memory address one and it will bring it back and it will store it in the memory data register. Now at that point, going back to what the control unit does, it will actually decode that instruction and find out what it is that needs to happen. So it might be that it needs to perform a calculation or it might be that it needs to move somewhere else in memory and the control unit will make that happen. That's the execution part of it. If it was a calculation, the ALU or the arithmetic logic unit will carry out that calculation and then temporarily store it in the accumulator. The process just carried out again. So the program counter is increased to two and it will then start that cycle again where it will then fetch whatever's in memory address register two 
and then it will bring it back to the MDR and the control unit will take care of it. It will decode that instruction and it will execute whatever needs to happen next. So it's a relatively difficult but short topic that people get a little bit confused on, but it's actually fairly simple when you think about what, what you need to know. And we've got some example questions for you to try out. So most of these are based on ones that we've had in the past and try and not look back in your notes when you're answering these and pause the video and then you can go back and check and see if you've got them right. The repetition of this is what will make this topic much easier, especially when it comes to thinking of the different registers and what their purpose are with the CPU. Okay, and that's it for this session. I'll see you next time.